the one, the only, Howard A. Ethelhawk III, Esquire. Oh, well, well. Um, I think it's important, so uh, I'm a Native American person, we're still alive, fuck you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I think it's important to start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, it's good to be here on the land of the Coast Salish people, right, folks? Yeah, they used to enjoy it, too. Um, they used to like it a lot, and now you're here. Uh, <laughs> and I'm here to talk to you about a very special, a very special thing. I have been tasked uh, to, to talk about uh, land back. Anybody know what land back is? One person knows what land back is? Anybody who doesn't know what land back is want to take a guess? It's two words. <laughs> and I'm Native American, and I'm talking to you about it. <laughs> so imagine, if you will, what land back might mean <laughs> in that context. Some people don't get it. Some people are confused by it. Some people think that like it's a metaphor or something. <laughs> a very special metaphor where the white people go back to Europe. <laughs> this is a very special metaphor. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I think about it all the time, let's be honest. Uh, because I like Seattle a lot, except for all of the white people who are ruining my life every single day. And it's not that you have, you know, like ruined my life recently, it's that you did a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I just like, I think the biggest problem for me is the lines. There's so many white people in every line that I go to. I'll just tell you, it's like fucking crazy. Everywhere is a gigantic line of white people. And one, just one time, I'd like to show up and not have one white person in the whole line, you know? <laughs> just once. I think that'd be really nice. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually have been tasked to talk about um, land back by the Seattle Neighborhood Department. Right, the Seattle Neighborhood Department <laughs> asked me, a Native American person, comedian, punishment comedy, <laughs> himself, uh, to talk about land back, which is a little bit like if in 100 years the Israel state uh, asked somebody who was a Palestinian descent to talk about land back. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. It's a little bit like that. It's like, wow, what if we just cycled through to the future where, as Dan once told me, soon enough they'll be doing land acknowledgments for the Palestinian people. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit like that. It's interesting. I thought, like, maybe I'll put a lot of work into it. Maybe I'll, like, make a skit and, like, do this whole elaborate thing. And then I thought, like, what if I just got a guest spot on a place where I didn't have to pay for any of it and they just give me money afterwards, just whether or not it's good. You know, whether or not I practice this, whether or not I put a lot of thought into it, <laughs> I will be getting paid. Right now I'm getting paid, currently. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what land back means, you know? Maybe land back means you give money to native people. No, that's not what it means. It's not enough money. Okay, <laughs> land is money, all right? Uh, white people are fascinating. That's what I figured out over my 33 years of uh, being a native person alive. I have figured out that you guys are really interesting. Uh, you will do things that are confounding, I would say, uh, <laughs> confounding. You will do things like destroy the environment and then become white environmentalists, which I think is really fascinating. I'm not sure what that's about. Kill every single buffalo, become a vegan. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting, I like that. I, I, I think that it's a, it, because like, you know, when white people uh, came here, they, they called us savages, they said that we weren't using the land, they said that we were, uh, you know, just aimlessly wandering around the woods and that somebody had to take over it, Dr. Discovery, et cetera, and so on. You all know, you went to class. Um, and, uh, and I think that's really funny because there's uh, something that uh, this amazing uh, native thinker, writer, Vine Deloria uh, spoke about in one of his books, which I think is Custer Died for Your Sins is the name of that one. Um, and uh, if you'll allow me, he... Uh, he was talking about, there's a river outside of Chicago, because he's talking about how white people, uh, they really thought that Native people weren't using the land and that they were putting it to better use. And so he talked about this river outside of Chicago that uh, it set, it's, on, it's inflammable, it sets on fire, 
It's a rock, it's a water river. It's a, made of water and it sets on fire. And uh, and he thought that was just a delight. Um, he thought, wow, you're right. You know what? We what native person would have ever thought to pollute a river to the point where it would set on fire? What a magnificent thing you've done, <laughs> white people. Fantastic, fantastic. I love it so much. You know, it made me even think about like. Because I'm, I'm one of those people that are, where my brain is just a web of connections. And when I think about these things, like so many things go off. And I started thinking about Land Back when I was watching the Barbie movie. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm sure you did too. <laughs> because you, one of my first... <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things I thought about when, when it was when you go there is that their ocean was completely filled to the brim with plastic. It's the America in a hundred years. It was it, you can't even swim. You polluted it so much. Barbie Land is the future of America. Is all I'm saying because uh, they even had like <laughs> they even had their own for uh, they had their uh, what is that fucking Mount Rushmore of Barbies. Right? Which, I don't know if you know this, but the Mount Rushmore is actually on the stolen land of the, uh, well, everything's on the stolen land of the, but uh, they're on the stolen land of the Sioux people, the Lakota people, and, uh, and I started to think about Barbie land, and I was like, shit, I think that the Barbies were colonizers? You know, like, they're giving the Kens a lot of shit, but they didn't have any power. <laughs> and then, meanwhile, you go to this very homoge homogeneous place where there's clearly a second class of citizens, the Kens, and also the weird Barbie who's out living alone on their Barbie Dreamland Reservation dream house with, like, a <laughs> oh, weird makeup. Oh, no, they sit weird, cross-legged. Oh, no, interesting. Hmm, perhaps. The Barbies were colonizers. And and I'm just gonna say Barbie Landback, you know what I'm saying? Barbie Landback. <laughs> yeah, white people are a delight. If it wasn't for all of the murder, uh, <laughs> you guys would be great. Because where would reality, te reality television be without white people? You know what? Tell me that. Because that's what you guys are for. That's like, I don't know. <laughs> See, Greta gets it. I don't know if you know, but uh, most brown and black people would never do a TV show like Naked and Afraid. Do you know the TV <laughs> show Naked and Afraid? It's my favorite show. If you don't know it, it's two white people in a natural environment failing. Just dying for your entertainment slowly. It's beautiful. And it is just an absolutely splendid thing to watch. And I and I will say to white women, I had no idea what you guys were dealing with with white men until I watched Make Another Friend. Which is, why is it that every white dude who considers themselves an outdoorsman and has tribal tattoos and clearly takes a lot of steroids think that on the third day of being in the woods they can just drink out of a puddle? What's that about? Dysentery. Every single time, it is dysentery. Which I thought was a made up thing from the Oregon Trail video game. No, apparently it's real and you can get it if you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm from the woods in Alaska, no dysentery. Not even once, you know, because I'm not a dumbass. And so, uh, you know, it, you know, it, it's funny too because like, you know, like, the Oregon Trail video game is another one of those strange moments in like white history where, you know, we, I mean, have we played the video game, Oregon Trail video game, everybody know that game? Yeah? If you don't know, it's white people, uh, they start in, I assume, Europe, and then they end up in Oregon, and it's a really hard game. There's only one person I know who beats it consistently, Jim Stewart Allen, shout out to that guy, the pinnacle. Broccoli man, uh, the pinnacle of white excellence is what I like to call him. Um, and I'll say it, I'm not afraid. Uh, and he, uh, not many people beat that game, right? It's a game that's really difficult. And you like, if you're traveling, you and your four companions get bit by rattlesnakes, you break a wagon wheel, you trade with some Native Americans, give them smallpox. It's in the game, just part of the game, it's just history. And, uh, and you rarely make it to Oregon. And I, as a you know, a person who's been to Oregon and seen a whole lot of white people, mostly, if not all, and, uh, and I was wondering how then did you guys get to Oregon? And I think I figured it out. I was going on a hike uh, in LA, of all places you can go on a hike. It's not really a hike to me, it's mostly kind of like these stairs. Because uh, I'm from the woods in Alaska and I'm built and I can do whatever I want. And I was going off trail on this like hike and I was pretty much wearing exactly what I'm wearing now. I'm just cruising, listening to my you know, headphones and just having a good time. And I was coming around the corner and I heard what I think most of us would be able to identify the drop of the hat. Around the corner I heard the sounds of a complaining white man. You know? And I could tell 
that he was in distress and I turned the corner and I looked and there's an older white man uh, who uh, was face down, flat on this like incline. He had the little ski pole things, you know? So he d didn't belong there. He had those little ski pole things. He's face down on the ground, just sucking in dirt. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at him and I being a respectable person, was gonna leave him there to die in peace, give him his dignity, you know? Just drop a little bit of sage or tobacco and bless his journey. And, uh, <laughs> Maybe take a little bite, maybe a little nibble, you know, one bite. What, natives are a little bit, we can we can be a little cannibal sometimes, you know, and just one little bite. He was already dying. And so, uh, and so I see this older white man, he's on the ground, and, and again, he looked really, he looked probably like 70, I would say, and I know that white people age faster than everybody else, so he's like probably like 23, 24, 24 old white man. And, uh, and I go by him and he reached out his hand and he said, hey, can you please help me? Can you, can you please help me? And I reached out my hand and I helped him. And in that moment, I realized that that's how you motherfuckers got to Oregon. <laughs> I had committed the number one sin of all native people. I found a lost white man in the woods and I helped him. <laughs> I have smallpox now. And he, he lives in my house, he stole my kids, <laughs> and I'm paying him taxes for all of it. Land back, land back, land back. People are afraid of it. People are afraid of land back. And I don't really get it. You know, like, I think that people, I think that white people are afraid of land back, truly. Uh, because everybody's using the hashtag, the people that support it, people say land back, but I've yet to see anybody give back their house. Uh, I still have to pay rent. So it feels like they're afraid of it. And, and, and I would like to dissuade white people from the fear of land back. Because I think that white people are worried that that's likely going to be the apocalypse for white people. But I'm here to tell you right now that this is the apocalypse for everybody. <laughs> You've already done it. <laughs> You know, don't worry about it. You are already currently zombies. You just don't know it. It's fine. You'll figure it out. So it's not that big a deal. You don't even like most white people. Let's be honest. Even the white people don't even like most white people. You don't, you don't want to be around them. And I, I think that, like, when I think about, like, where Lambeck will go one day, because, again, it is, like, somewhat of a discussion. People are like, what does it mean? And I, I do think it's very simple, and it's not anything to be too afraid of, because Native people are very generous. We're very kind. That's why you're alive. <laughs> you know, we have the historical precedence. So, and I, I think that, like, it, it's going to be okay, because, like, one day, when we are getting our land back after, uh, you know, several generations of curb stomping, um, uh, we will we'll, we'll show up some, your door one day, and we'll knock, and you'll open the door, and, and, and I'll be there. <laughs> and I'll say, hello, my name's Howie Echohawk. We're still alive, fuck you. And, uh, and I'll say to you guys, uh, you must know now that it is time for you to go home. We are doing land back, and so we will get you a business class ticket to Europe. You'll fit right in. You know, just anywhere, wherever you want to go in Europe, we'll get, we'll get you there. Where it's no problem. And then I imagine I, right now I can sense that some of you are like, well, what if I don't want to leave? That's okay. We actually have opportunities for this. All that you have to do is answer serious questions, okay? Like, when's the last time you watched the sunrise? <laughs> Not looking great. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, if you haven't seen a sunrise soon, when's the last time you uh, just went to the waterfall by the mountain and just sat for an hour? You know, when's the last time you did that? No, nothing. It's okay. It's okay. We have more options for you. We have more options. Do you have a person of color who is not related to you or married to you or dating you who will vouch for you, giving you something kind of like a green card, perhaps a white card? Um, <laughs> And they will vouch for you. They cannot be related to you or dating to you or having people. And they will vouch for you that you could be here. Just one. That's all you need is one. And they're responsible for you, okay? Okay, well, maybe not that either. So then we, uh, it's fine. There's another thing. There's another thing, white people. Uh, we'll give you a handful of shrooms. Just a handful of shrooms. And, and we'll sit there and we're just going to ask you a bunch of fucking questions, okay? <laughs> and and if, you figure, if you come through that, it's going to be okay. If you're still afraid of that, do not worry. If you absolutely are like, I was born here, my, my ancestors didn't do this, I need to stay, that's fine. We have some very select locations in Oklahoma uh, where you can go and it just stay. And it's, I don't want to call it a reservation uh, uh, because that implies... 
uh, that uh, you're gonna want to go there, <laughs> but you will be fine there. I think I think you'll be fine. Um, I'm getting paid for this <laughs> currently. It's not lamb bag, but it is nice. Um, I think before I get out of here because I've run out of time. Is that I'll just say, uh, listen, <laughs> just go back to Europe. <laughs>